Arguably, one of the best lenses for YouTube videos is the Sigma 16 1.4 lens. An incredible lens to give you that nice blurry background and a great lens for talking head video. It's the lens I am currently using right now to shoot this intro and it looks pretty good. But at $400, that can be expensive. That's why I wanna talk about this lens. The Sony 16 millimeter 2.8 lens that you can buy for around $100 or less and we're gonna see if $300 difference makes a difference. Let's go. You gotta just press record. Hey, what's up? It's Omar Altakoy with Think Media, helping you build your influence with online video. And on this channel, sometimes we do YouTube strategy videos, as well as tech gear reviews and comparisons, just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Now, I love the Sigma 16 millimeter lens. It's literally probably one of the best lenses you can buy for just regular talking head videos. And it's a lens that we have pushed for not only Sony uh, you know, crop sensored cameras, but also for the Canon M50. It's just a great focal length. And at 16 millimeters on a crop camera, it's essentially about like a 24 millimeter lens, which is what you would consider medium wide. This video was sponsored by StreamYard. This is our go-to platform for live streaming to YouTube and Facebook, especially when we have multiple people joining us on a stream. With an incredibly easy to use interface for doing cool transitions, bringing in text on the screen, and seamlessly bringing on guests. This is the perfect platform for the new and experienced creators alike. You can use the link that we have in the description below to get $10 off. Like I mentioned earlier in this video, the Sigma 16 is what I'm currently using right now to shoot this talking head video. Uh, and it's currently attached to my Sony a6600. And this Sigma lens goes well with any of Sony's um, cropped mirrorless cameras. But let me throw on this lens that's you know, you can get for around 80 to $120 and see if you can even notice the difference between the two. Let's check that out right now. And now you are looking through the Sony 16 millimeter 2.8 lens that I bought for about a hundred bucks. Do you notice the difference from the lens that I had on earlier, the Sigma 16, uh, which is about $400. When I was really looking back and forth, I really couldn't notice too much of a difference. Here at Think Media, we don't really pixel peep, like we don't really zoom in and like see like the nuances of the corners and stuff, but like the general image, I would say is kind of hard to distinguish the difference between the two. Um, so all that to say, this is what you get. I mean, $400 versus about $100 when you consider buying it used. Um, I should mention that it is about a 200 and something dollar lens if you buy it brand new, but why buy it brand new? If you could buy it used with some warranty, save a hundred bucks. Nonetheless, an incredible option, but let's talk about some of the, the differences and I think the best use case scenarios for a lens like this. But before I do, let's throw on the Sigma one more time to compare the difference between the two. So this is what you would get with the Sigma 16 1.4 with your aperture all the way down to 1.4. And I don't typically shoot in this uh, low of an aperture, but this is what you can achieve in comparison to the 2.8, which is as low as you can go with the Sony lens. And so that is just a comparison I wanted you to see. Uh, again, if you haven't commented down below, if you notice a difference, let me know in the comments below. And if you think the difference, if you do see one, is worth $300 of a difference. Um, nonetheless, I just wanted to talk about some things. Maybe they're obvious, maybe they're not so obvious. The first thing is obviously the physical size of these lenses. Uh, maybe one would say, how is that even possible? How can you have a lens this small that is the same focal length as this, and it's this big and this heavy? Um, and so I think the first thing, I don't wanna bore you with unnecessary information, but the reason why the Sigma is uh, this big is because of the amount of glass that's inside. Uh, obviously the aperture, it goes a lot lower on the Sigma and I would say maybe that's kind of how I was able to trick you, uh, which we'll jump into another comparison in just a second. But the Sigma does go as low as 1.4. So if you wanna bring your aperture all the way down to 1.4, you can do that. With this lens, uh, you can only go as low as 2.8, which I would say is a great focal length. Many times, like up right now, many times I actually put the Sigma uh, at around 2.2 to 2.8 because I don't love the super blurry background. I want you to see a little bit of what's going on uh, behind me, but in the event I need to do that, then we can, we can bring it lower. Another reason why it's nice to have a very low aperture is for low light. You know, if you don't have that much light uh, around you, you can actually just bring down your aperture and it'll bring in more light into your image or your video, not having to compromise your ISO or ISO and cranking that up. Now that is kind of the obvious physical difference that I wanted to talk about, but now I wanna talk about use case difference. 
Um, when, it, when it comes to using a lens like this, I think it's incredible, especially because 16 millimeter is great for about arm's length distance. And 16 millimeters is a great focal length to put on your camera if you're using it as a webcam as well. And so uh, the biggest issue I found when using the Sigma with my Sony is how heavy this is. And so if you're using like a friction arm to hold up your camera or you know, you're know you mounting it somewhere else and you wanna get ninja with the way you mount it, which I do, I, I clamp on my camera behind my monitor. Uh, this lens is just too heavy to hold something like that up, especially when you add in the weight of the camera itself. Now, if I use the Sony lens on a webcam setup, it's gonna, weigh nothing, it's almost like just the weight of the camera needs to be held up and no longer does the weight of the lens have to be taken up. And then there's obviously the physical difference in regards to how far or close the camera could go based off of how long this lens is. And so I think for you know live streaming, YouTube talking head, uh, you're not gonna move your you know lights too much. This is an incredible lens. I think everyone who has a Sony cropped mirrorless camera should have this lens in their kit. I mean, at about 80 to $120 you have a lens that'll give you great image. Um, and I think another use case scenario that I just didn't mention a little bit ago is that you can't quite live stream or do zoom calls in 4K. And so um, you're gonna bring your camera down to 1080p regardless, every time I go live or go on my zoom calls, my camera's at 1080p, not at 4K. And for that reason, uh, it's because you can't really do anything in 4K yet live. Now, because of that, one of the major differences is sharpness. The Sigma is hands down the more sharper lens in comparison to the Sony, but at 1080, and then you're then pushing, you know, your image through the interwebs that it's crushing even the quality even more, I would say the more you won't even recognize uh, the difference between the two lenses. Now, another use case scenario for a lens like this 100% is vlogging. I think uh, if you are vlogging with a Sony lens, this could get a little heavy, even though it's an incredible lens um, and it gives you an, an awesome image. Uh, having this lens on your camera is gonna be super light and you won't have a vlogger's fatigue, which does happen when you're vlogging out and about, um, but you're gonna get an incredible image. And uh, because the lens isn't as uh, long as well, this attributes to even how far, how much further the camera is essentially getting uh, from your face when you're holding it just arm's length distance. And so that's just some things to think about. You kind of get more field of view with this one because it's a shorter lens, whereas this one, it's a little bit more closer. Also, I think if you didn't know this, if you vlog in 24 frames per second, you will get more field of view. Uh, that's just a Sony thing. 4K 30 just usually has a crop, but if you're shooting in 4K 24, you're getting the full uh, readout of your sensor. So just something to note, but nonetheless, an incredible vlogging lens. So um, just something to think about. Those are some use case scenarios uh, with when it comes to this lens. But nonetheless, I think if you own a Sony mirrorless camera, uh, especially a crop camera, look at this lens and maybe have it in your kit um, if you don't already have this. Now, I think if you are you know, doing photography with your mirrorless camera, this is a photography lens. Uh, the ability to have that 1.4 is great for low light, but also if there's any major difference when it comes between the two, it is sharpness. Uh, that's what you're getting with this glass. You're getting more of a sharper image. And yes, you can sharpen your uh, videos or photos in post, but whenever you can produce the the best image possible up front, the better it's gonna be in post. So uh, I would say for, for if, you're, if you're doing hybrid stuff, like you're doing photography and you're doing video, Sigma, obviously, but specifically for video, live streaming, vlogging, this Sony 16 millimeter is incredible. So there you have it. That is the comparison between these two lenses. I think nonetheless, a 16 millimeter lens in your kit is awesome. I know a lot of the times the kit lens will come with your camera and that'll be about a 15 or 16 lens to 55, but the aperture starts at 3.5. And so you're gonna have a lot less blurry background behind you. And so I think for a hundred bucks, this is incredible. What else does this mean? This also means that you can save money if you're going to buy a mirrorless camera, a Sony mirrorless camera, and just buy the body. Whether you buy the body used or just buy the body by itself, don't buy the kit lens and get this lens and then you'll overall save some money uh, in setting up your YouTube studio or what have you. And so I think this is an incredible lens. I didn't wanna bash the Sigma lens because it 100% is a legendary 
lens. I think for my uses, I would lean toward the Sigma. I would make the investment. Why? Because I'm doing photos, I'm doing videos, uh, and sometimes that 1.8 or that 2.0 comes in clutch in regards to the, the image setup that I'm going with for whatever I'm using it. However, if you are you know, just gonna do talking head videos, if you are just gonna use your camera for, as a live stream or webcam, maybe this is the lens to go with uh, because of your setup or what have you, but just think about the use case more than anything. Or if you wanna see this ultimate vlog rig that I made out of the Sony mirrorless camera using the Sigma, which you can obviously swap up the lens now, uh, you can check that out as well by clicking or tapping the screen. And I can't wait to see you in a future video. Peace.